Hello, you are watching the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at the headlines. Left candidate leads Colombia's presidential primary. A report says that media in the Indian Union territory of Jammu and Kashmir is being choked. Prominent Palestinian lawyer is placed in administrative detention. And Iran says that Erbil missile attack targeted Israeli bases. In our first story, left-wing pre-candidate Gustavo Petro has taken the lead in Colombia's upcoming presidential election. He won the primaries of the Progressive Historic Pact Coalition on March 13th. With almost all votes counted, Petro won a share of 80% or over 4.4 million votes. Meanwhile, former Mayor Federico Guterres secured the nomination from the right-wing Team for Colombia Coalition. The centrist Hope Coalition has chosen mathematician Sergio Fardo as his candidate. He will join Petro, Guterres and several other candidates from smaller parties to contest the election on May 29th. Gustavo Petro is a former guerrilla of the M19 rebel group. He was elected to the Senate in 2006 and as later as the mayor of Bogota. His platform includes a tax reform that will eliminate exemptions for corporations. He has also pledged a readjustment to the pension system and a real wage based on capital and income. He has also proposed to replace the economy's dependence on fossil fuels, mining and hydrocarbon extraction with agriculture. Colombia has witnessed a rise in poverty and violence, including the killing of social leaders and a far-right president, Ivan Duque. His ruling Democratic Center Party has chosen Oscar Ivan Zuluaga as its candidate. Around 39 million Colombians were eligible to vote on Sunday to also elect 108 senators and 188 members of Congress. According to preliminary results, as of Monday morning, the historic pact has secured 16 seats in the Senate and 25 in the Congress. In our next story, news media in Jammu and Kashmir is slowly being choked. This is mainly due to extensive curbs imposed by the government. Journalists in the region have been facing constant harassment from security forces in the line of duty. A fact-finding committee of the Press Council of India has presented this report on the state of media in the region. The body was set up in September 2021 after a complaint by former Chief Minister Mehbooba Mufti. It states that the region's administration suspected that a large number of journalists were militant sympathizers with anti-national persuasion. Normal lines of communication have been disrupted with the administration opting for selective engagement with preferred journalists. Media persons have faced accusations of aiding separatists, interrogations, arrests and detention for spreading of fake news. People spoke of a deliberate hobbling of communication networks since Article 370 was abrogated. The practice of issuing accreditation cards to journalists has also been stopped since March 2020. This has made it difficult for news persons to move around, gain access to restricted areas and government offices. The public relations work of several departments has also been taken over by the police. Most journalists confirmed that they had been made to fill a profiling questionnaire, suggestive of them having links to anti-national forces. The police have considered that 49 journalists have been arrested and charged since 2016. We now go to Palestine, where human rights lawyer Salah Hamouri has been placed under administrative detention by Israel. The order was issued last week, days after he was arrested in a raid north of Jerusalem. Hamouri was then transferred to the Ofer Israeli military prison. He has been placed in detention without charge or trial for four months. Israel has accused him of being a member of the banned Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine. Hamouri represented Palestinian prisoners and also worked for the rights group Adamir, which was recently banned by Israel. Prior to his arrest, he had already spent years in prison and under administrative detention. He also faced travel bans and his wife and French national Elsa Lefort was also deported. In 2021, groups including Amnesty International found that Hamouri's phone had been infected with the NSO group's Pegasus spyware. In October, Israel's Interior Ministry illegally revoked his residency status and ordered his deportation from Jerusalem. It stated that his actions represented a breach of alliance to the State of Israel. The accusation that Hamouri belonged to a terrorist group or engaged in terrorist activity was supposedly based on secret evidence. He was fighting his residency revocation at the time of his arrest. Hamouri's lawyers had filed for an injunction allowing him to remain in Jerusalem until the final ruling. The request was rejected by the Supreme Court last week. And for our final story, Iran has claimed responsibility for a missile attack on the city of Erbil in Iraq. The Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, or IRGC, said that it fired 12 ballistic missiles on locations used by Israel. This was in retaliation for Israel's attack on Syria, which killed two IRGC members. Israel has carried out hundreds of unprovoked air attacks on Syria since 2011, claiming to target Iranian and Hezbollah bases. The IRGC's missiles hit the capital of the Kurdistan region early on March 13th, According to al Mayadeen, at least one base of Israeli intelligence Mossad was destroyed. No human casualties were reported in several houses and a news channel office were damaged. The attack was condemned by Iraqi Prime Minister Mustafa al Kadimi, who also announced an investigation into the matter. Several Arab countries, the US and France, also denounced the attack. Meanwhile, 
The Iraqi militia popular mobilization forces issued a statement asking the regional Kurdish government to stop collaborating with Israel. It claimed that hosting Israelis in the country made it a legitimate target. PMF constituent Kata Hezbollah reiterated the need to expel foreign military and intelligence bases from Iraq. Iran has accused the Kurdish groups of collaborating with Israel and has been demanding the total withdrawal of US troops from the region. The push grew after the 2020 assassination of IRGC commander Qasim Soleimani and PMF commander Abu Mehdi Al Mohandis. And that's all for today's episode. For more such stories, visit our website peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks for watching.